first thing I'm going to do is remove this landing board here because that's not going to be needed. Let's that. Now I'm going to lighten the hive slightly by taking the roof off. Um, and here we see uh, remains of some fondant fed to them over the winter and has never been removed so it's been trapped in there. Okay. And we'll trap these. Uh, right now I'm going to move this box over here. Because what we want is this hive off to one side and the bees flying into the entrance of the new hive. So I'm just going to pick this up bodily and move it now. It's quite a heavy hive. I'd say this weighs probably close to, it's probably 80, 90 pounds. And that's one of the drawbacks of these big old Dadent hives. They are very, very heavy things to move around. You notice that uh, already we have a bunch of bees looking for their entrance, although it's only a matter of inches away from where it used to be. That's how closely they orientate themselves. Now this box has a mesh floor, so it's completely self-contained. Once the bees are in here, they can be, the whole box can be moved. So the next thing I've got to do is get this box on top of this box. And because this box has a bottom bee space, I don't need to worry about putting it directly on top of here because this has no bee space at all. So hopefully everything should balance up nicely and the bees will be able to get in and out of this box with no trouble. So I've just got to lift this box on top of that one. Just making sure it's free at the bottom because often these things get stuck to their floors. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> that's it, right, that's nicely aligned on there. Gives us an opportunity to look at the floor of this one. This, uh, this mesh floor, um, I actually designed this about uh, five, six years ago as a modification to the Dayton Hive to allow the easy inspection for Varroa. And as you can see, this sits on here. This is the original entrance block, which just gets turned around 380 degrees. The mesh floor goes on top, and then you can slide out this plastic tray as you can see, this hasn't been done for a while, and there's all sorts of stuff in here, which I shall have a look at in a moment. Meanwhile, I just want to make sure that these bees are able to fly in and out of the entrance. What's happening is that they can... Uh, they can obviously scent that their box is up here and there's a small gap there which they're trying to use as an entrance. Well, they ain't going to succeed on that. So sooner or later, they're going to have to learn where the real entrance is. Um, but in the meantime, what I can do is to move this box forward about an inch and that will give them uh, a temporary entrance that they can uh, use for the meantime. So now I've given them an, an entrance here, which they can get in and out of the hive quite easily. And um, this will allow them to just get used to there being another box here. And uh, probably this evening, 
I should come back and close this entrance because then the only way they can get out of this box is through the is by going down through the top bar hive part of it. I'm also going to take the lid off and have a little check in here because I want to know what what these bees are up to and how they're getting on. Now the the process of the of transfer is going to be done at the speed of the bees. And um, what I've just noticed actually is something that's quite pertinent is that I've uh, I've actually put this box on top, not taking account of the fact that the direction of the frames is different. So the frames in this top box, which was the original box of course, are going this way, fore and aft, and the frames in the bottom box, or rather the top bars in the bottom box, are going this way at right angles. So I've actually got to rotate this whole hive. I've just put my gloves on and uh, got my water bottle handy because these bees are a little bit feisty. I'm just going to move them around now. This is just a uh, water spray, which just calms them down a little bit. I use it instead of smoke because uh, it doesn't provoke the uh, emergency response in bees like smoke does. I don't like using gloves because I find they make me clumsy and uh, it's much easier to squash bees with gloves on than not. But these are quite, shall we say, excitable bees and so I'm not inclined to do this job without gloves today. There's plenty of brood in here. Looks like a healthy hive. I'm just going to check a couple more combs. Now you can see you get that familiar scent of uh, bananas which lets you know that the hive is really not entirely happy with you being here. Very nice brood pattern, the queen's making full use of the available space. There's a cell there which has, by the look of it, got a developing larva in it. So it looks like they might be thinking of requeening themselves. It's a bit late for swarming, I don't think they're thinking of swarming, but that's also possible. And uh, with any luck, the additional space down below will discourage that from happening. So I've just put the hive back together. Give them a little spray just to get their heads down. Don't like squashing bees. Pop the crown board back on. There we are. It's going to take them a while to sort themselves out. They've, their entrance is still um, access into, their, into, their, into this top box here. Um, they will get used to this box being on here and in a matter of um, hours probably I shall move that box back and they'll be forced to use the entrance at the bottom as from tomorrow morning. And we'll come back in a week or so and just see how they're getting on.